Hey everybody, what's happening? My name is Steven. And I'm Spencer. We work with Nexus Youth and Family Services here in Amador County. And what we want to do is bring you a presentation today regarding tobacco. Now, if you've continued in our series with us, we've covered smart goals and decision making. And so what we want to do is we want to talk to you a little bit about the history of tobacco and also give you as much information as we can that's extremely practical for you. So first off, we'll talk about cigarettes from past to present. As you can see here, this is an early depiction of a Mayan smoking some kind of tube, we don't know what it is exactly, um, but we do know is that the first rolled cigarettes were made and invented in the 9th century, and that was in North, Central, and South America. And then as time grew on, they kind of became a global phenomenon right around, what was it, about 1800 or so? Yeah. When they started making their, as global exploration became a, more, a bigger thing, is when they started becoming more worldwide known and used. Absolutely, and so what we want to talk to you a little bit is we want to go over the history or maybe some of the bigger tobacco companies that were the, the start of this big tobacco push. And one of the big companies is Philip Morris. See, in this picture you'll see Philip Morris here, you'll see Cool, and you'll see the other brand over there, Laura Lillard. And the reality is, is that these companies, they've been around for a long time. Mar uh, Philip Morris has been around since like the, eight, the middle of the 1800s. So they've been around almost 150, almost 160 years. So it's quite impressive that these companies have been in existence so long. The problem is, some of these companies on here are the leading companies when it comes to e-cigarettes and vape pens as well, which we'll cover in a different video. But when it comes to tobacco, these are some of the big culprits when it comes to getting people to use and, and smoke cigarettes. So as you can see here, these are some of the old advertisements that um, cigarette companies used to put out. And one of their big tactics used to be talking about how doctors recommended theirs. As you can see here, in this ad right here, it's a Camel Cigarettes ad. It says, not one single case of throat irritation when using Camels. So That's their claim crazy. here is that if you smoke a different brand of cigarettes, it'll irritate your throat. But if you smoke our brand of Camels, it won't irritate your throat. Obviously now we know that not to be true. This is obviously a very old advertisement. But again, it's a tactic that was used for a very long time. Same thing here. Over 20, almost 21,000 physicians say, Luckies are less irritating. Again, they're making, and this is a different brand of cigarettes, making the same claim that their cigarette isn't as irritating to the throat as another brand would be. And the problem with this is back then they didn't have any kind of rules or laws against false advertisements. So they could pretty much just say whatever they wanted to, guys. So they made these claims with no backing, no science behind them at all. Just saying, hey, if you smoke our brand of cigarettes, your throat will be less irritated. And so also we're going to talk a few, a few more seconds about this advertising. So obviously as Spencer mentioned, when it comes to doctors, you want to listen to your physicians. And so when the physicians were on the advertisements, it was like, oh man, we have to listen to those guys. But then we have these kind of things here where it looks like a dentist is basically promoting uh, this brand of cigarettes as well. So it wasn't just the physicians. Now we have dental people. So people that we're supposed to be trusting and the medical profession are now saying, hey, go ahead and use it. And obviously, after years of studying and research, we've seen that these things aren't healthy at all. That's actually quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, you have when smokers change to Philip Morris, every case of irritation due to smoking cleared completely or definitely improved. And what they've done is they've used somebody that's young, a young person. They, they love going after the young people. They love going after you. So it's not, uh, it's not by chance. This is definitely a, a part of their tactics that they've used. They've used medical professionals. They're using young people mm -hmm. because they know that people listen to, the, to these sort of people on a regular basis to get information, especially when it comes to our health. And as you can see here, guys, they also have advertisements that were really geared towards young people. So over here on the far left, you have a Flintstone. From a, a scene from one of the Flintstone shows. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, they probably have win a pack of Winston cigarettes there as he lights his wife's cigarette for her. We know Flintstones was a very popular family cartoon when it first came out and stayed that way for a very long time. So the fact that they had ad ads in it advertising for cigarettes shows a lot about who they were trying to advertise to. Then you have over here, this is Joe Camel. Joe Camel was the mascot for Camel cigarettes for a very long time. Joe Camel was literally a cartoon camel. He was cool. He rode a motorcycle. It was something that kids could kind of look at and think like, oh, that guy's kind of cool. I want to be like him. And then here you have an advertisement for, I believe this is Lucky Strike Cigarettes. And you can see it's a young lady. Looks like a cheerleader. 
So again, they're using these ads to kind of reach, reach towards young people and get them interested in smoking cigarettes and things like that. And that, up here, we're going to put across the screen here a couple little, uh, just some quotes from a few different tobacco companies. I believe these are actually from Philip Morris. And it says, today's teenager is tomorrow's potential regular customer, and the overwhelming majority of smokers first begin to smoke while in their teens. Mm -hmm. And the second one here says, the base of our business are high, is the high school student. So, and these came out, guys, these quotes came out in the mid-70s and early 80s, which shows that they knew as far back then that their customer base would start with high school students and young people. They knew that 80% of smokers start smoking, 80% of lifetime smokers start smoking before the age of 18. Yeah. That's a, that's a crazy statistic. Yeah. So what we want to do now is we want to kind of shift gears a little bit and give you as many facts as we can. It, it, not in its entirety, but we want to give you some facts that we've done the research on and it's pretty common. And so what we want to do is we want to talk about this. 480,000 people die each year from using tobacco products. That's almost a half a million people. And so typically you'll hear us in class or you'll hear us in some other presentations and we'll talk about this. And one of the big reasons that the tobacco companies are able to continue to work and be around is because as 480,000 people have died, they're continuing every single day and marketing towards new customers. That's how they're able to be around, even with a half million people, almost a half million people dying every single year. Then each cigarette cuts about five minutes off your life, or about 15 years on average. If you do the math, that's a lot of cigarettes to take 15 years off your life on average. There are over 600 ingredients in each cigarette. You think it's just tobacco, you think it's just a tobacco leaf? That's not the case. But also, uh, down here on the bottom, when burned, each cigarette creates more than 7,000 chemicals, and 69 of those are known to cause cancer. So as you're using a cigarette, you're not typically thinking of what, uh, what's going into your body, what it's doing to your body, and that's pretty problematic when there's 7,000 chemicals being made. And all of these, you know, or 69 of them are known to be carcinogenics, which cause cancer. So just some more facts for you guys. This one says here, the average smoker spends about 25% of their yearly income on cigarettes. About $50 a week, $2,600 a year for somebody who smokes about a pack and a half a day. And that's a, would say, what, a medium to heavy smoker? Yeah, about a pack and a half a day? Yeah. Um, and just so you guys know, about a pack and a half a day is 30 cigarettes per day. That's a lot of cigarettes. That's more than one cigarette per hour. That's a lot of money to spend on, your, on cigarettes in your life. Also, I, I mentioned this earlier, but 90% of lifetime smokers start smoking before the age of 18. Again, this is the biggest reason why the tobacco industry targets young people because they've understood this for a very, very long time. Um, in the early 1900s, cigarettes were sometimes prescribed by doctors for, ad, for asthma patients <laughs> and those that needed help breathing. We always get a laugh out of this one because it, like, now that we know all the history of it and how bad these things are for your physical health, it's, kinda, it's just funny to think that that's what they used to do back then, but they didn't know any better. They thought that because cigarettes affected your lungs, it would make your lungs work harder to breathe. Obviously, the science doesn't back that up now, but in the early 1900s, they didn't have the technology and the science we have today. Um, also, it says here, each day, over 300 youth under 18 become regular smokers, regular cigarette users. That's a huge number. 300 a day is a massive number. And then at the bottom, it says the back industry is the cause of $170 billion in medical expenses each year, $156 billion in loss per uh, productivity to companies and exposure to secondhand smoke. So that's $326 billion lost each year by cigarette smokers or caused by cigarette smokers on average. That's a crazy number. Right? That's a huge <laughs> number. That's a lot of money. That is a crazy number. And if the trend continues, we're going to lose 5.6 million of you uh, to smoking related illnesses. That's just smoking. That doesn't even incorporate the e-cigarettes and vapes mm -hmm. where we're still learning and, and getting research done with that. So that's about one out of every 13 people, 17 and younger. So if you had a class that was 26 people, that would be two people in it. Yep. That's, a, that's an astronomical number and that's extremely frightening when we put it into that kind of context. The average smoker dies 10 years earlier than non-smokers. So we talked about the 15 years on average, but man, 10 years compared to people that don't smoke, life might be tough sometimes, and we'll talk about that in some other lessons, but yeah. 10 years less just because of a choice you're making seems a little bit problematic to us. Mm -hmm. Each day, more than 3,200 people younger than 18 smoke their first cigarette. 
Spencer mentioned, they become addicted users of 300, 300 of them. And so to have 3,200 smoke for the very first time, that number increasingly is even more, um, is, is more dangerous when it comes to the e-cigarettes and vape when we add those numbers into it as yeah, well. Most definitely. And then down here on the bottom, smoking causes cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung disease, diabetes, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, which includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. The problem with a lot of these, obviously, is the lungs. When it comes to your ability to breathe and to have the oxygen going in and out, what you need your body to do, it's obstructing that. It's, it's becoming a problem. So uh, using tobacco and cigarettes and stuff like that is, is problematic for your health. Mm -hmm. So this stuff we're going to talk a little bit about secondhand smoke and thirdhand smoke. Secondhand smoke is something that we've learned a lot about in the last, what did you say, 25, 30 years or so? Yeah, probably, probably longer than that, probably about 40 years. But before that, it was commonplace for people to be able to smoke in restaurants, buildings. Doctors would smoke in doctor's offices. You could smoke on airplanes. I mean, it was all commonplace. So what is secondhand smoke? Secondhand smoke is a mixture of side stream smoke of a cigarette or other kind of smoke tobacco and then the smoke that comes out of the person's lungs as they expel it from themselves. Um, since 1964, about two and a half million people who had never smoked before died of some kind of smoking related illness due to secondhand smoke. Cause, so it could be somebody that their spouse had smoked or somebody in their family smoked around them for a long time and they ended up with a disease. They ended up killing them even though they never made the choice themselves to smoke cigarettes. And real quick Spence, I think when it comes to that number, two and a half million people, what do you think maybe it would look like when it comes to these e-cigarettes and vape pens? Because we'll cover we'll cover that topic, but Definitely. what do you think that number could potentially be for the people around that? I mean, I think over time, you notice how this goes back to 1964. I think over time, we're gonna, you know, over that same amount of time, we'll probably see close to the same number. We're starting to find out how much, how many chemicals are expelled from the e-cigarettes and the vape pens as well. So we're learning more about secondhand aerosol from that. Yeah. So as we go on and just kind of keep going on with this experiment that is e-cigarettes we'll start to learn really how dangerous they are. Absolutely. Um, secondhand smoke increases risk of stroke by about 20 to 30 percent and non-smokers who are exposed to secondhand smoke have a 25 to 30 percent higher risk of developing some kind of heart disease. And then here we have thirdhand smoke. Thirdhand smoke is something that hasn't been talked about much but we're, uh, doctors and everybody are learning about a lot more about it as we go on and thirdhand smoke is a term used to describe the particles and gases that are left over after a cigarette is extinguished. So things that are left in the air after the cigarette's put out, after the smoker's done using it, there's still stuff that comes off of it. There's still gases that comes off of it. There's particles that are left in the air from the smoke and the secondhand smoke. So these particles land and remain virtually on, every, on any surface in an area where, the smoke, where someone has smoked. So that could be on clothes, hair, your furniture, floor, your, um, anything around you. Uh, they know that thirdhand smoke has a chance to damage DNA, and they know children are most at risk, mostly because they don't have a choice. So if mom or dad or somebody in the house is smoking around them, and the child is there, the child doesn't have a choice just to leave. They kind of have to be there. And we know that thirdhand smoke contains about 7,000 chemicals, about 70 which can cause cancer. So essentially the same exact number that number of chemicals that are contained in a cigarette, and number of cancer-causing chemicals contained in a cigarette as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so, we put this picture up regularly in class, and we ask the question, who's the smoker? Spence, who's the smoker? Guys, remember too, these are identical twins. <laughs> so same exact age and everything. Obviously this, this lady here is the smoker. Absolutely. The one on the right. Um, you can tell she, had, she has a lot more age marks than her sister who doesn't smoke. Her hair's a lot thinner. And she just generally looks a lot older. Her skin has more pockmarks and things <laughs> on it, you know. And that literally just comes from having smoke around your face, around you for so long. Smoking does physically age people. It, it ages you inside, and that's why people end up dying earlier in life. But it has physical changes on your outside appearance as well. Absolutely. Like, you can see your hair is a little bit more frayed. It doesn't seem, you know, maybe as healthy. And the wrinkles and all the stuff, the kind of the blotchiness, there's some different things that... Um, the, these chemicals and the things that you're inhaling and, and exposing yourself to can affect your body differently. It, it would affect my body or could potentially affect my body differently than it does Spencer's mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. So it's really important that we, un we understand that this is not uh, the end all be all. We know everything about uh, cigarettes or tobacco and that's okay. 
What we want to do is just give you a brief explanation, some brief information when it comes to tobacco use. Uh, we will cover topics like e-cigarettes and vape, and we'll dive more into that and what that looks like and the nicotine and tobacco involved in those, um, those different devices. So we just want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes with us and kind of talking about this as we walk through this. Um, as always, if you have any questions for us, don't hesitate to, to reach out to us. Our telephone number is 209-257-1980. You can listen to the list, the extension list, pick our extension. You can pick Stephen or Spencer. Reach out to us, leave us a voicemail if we're not there, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Most definitely. And as always, guys, stay healthy and stay safe.